精霊たちと共に紡がれていく壮大な物語私たちは新たな世界へと歩みを進めます未来を切り開きましょうフェイグランドオーダー私はチュンチャクそれからチュンに Hello everyone Welcome back for some more Fate Grand Order. It's a new day. We can continue on with the Water Monster Crisis event as we're heading down to Right Flank River and going to Mount of Doom. Mount of Doom. Well, by putting that oven there, they don't have to worry about copyright, I guess. Let's go. Unless they mean like a mount, like a, like a rider uses of Doom. That could be it. That could be it. I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, we got our own Mount of Doom. The giant mecha that patrols everywhere. All right. I think we're finally ready to begin our attack on the third area. <laughs> and now the Connor fully equipped with both weapons and armor. Whatever water monsters we face there should pose no threat to us at all. Oh, ho. I like your spirit, little girl. Ah, to be young again. I am a beautiful and vivacious young woman, yes. But if you ever treat me like a child, I will teach you more about pain than you ever wanted to know. God, I can't wait for your summer form to hopefully come and completely replace you. This isn't the time to let our guard down. There's no telling what we might come up against next. The goddess is right. We've made excellent progress, but we still need to be careful. So, what are the enemies in this next area like? Luckily, they're easy to describe. Basically, water horses. Oh, no, not Kelpies. Uh oh. Kelpies are super scary. Kelpies are, like, actually a problem. Yep, yep, that's a Kelpie, all right. I'll never forget the first time I saw the, the Berserk Kelpie and just being like, what the frick? It's just a, just a water horse. Like, what's the big deal? And just seeing people, like, running, screaming from it, being like, Oh god, it's a Kelpie! And, like, it starts, like, the mass destruction it starts to cause. It's so cool, because it now took something that was just kind of, like, whatever to me. Like, oh, it's a water horse. And now it's like, oh my god, you mean they're a destructive force of nature. Which is kind of what the myths originally had them as. Well, oh. Oh my. And I thought that was a figure of speech or something. A water monster looks like a horse, huh? There were several potential matches in the database, but the most likely match was the Kelpie. The Kelpie is a water spirit known primarily from Scottish folklore. While it usually resembles a horse, it can also apparently transform into a bird. Wow. That's really not a horse. From what I read, it's a terrifying being that drowns and devours any human who gets too close to it. Uh, anything else we should know about it? Like... If, say, it runs really fast or something, then we'll need to make sure it doesn't escape. Hey! Stop! Come back! Whoa! I... I wanna... I wanna ride it! What? The con got eaten just by getting on the thing's back? Oh no, all of you, stop, please. We wanna ride! We wanna ride! What do you think you're doing? You should have eyes only for your star. I, 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 I. So cool. Must ride. Pretty horsey. What's going on? It's as if the con are being sucked towards them, like, like they've been charmed or something. That's how those wicked Kelpies operate. They lure people into getting on their backs to ride them, then drag them down into the water and drown them. Not only that, it's also said that once you've touched or gotten on a Kelpie, you can never get away from them again. So they're luring the con in? Maybe it's a pheromone thing? Whatever it is, at least it's not working on us or Tanner. Maybe the con just aren't able to, uh, as able to resist, or are actively being targeted. I don't know, but right now... What are you waiting for, torturers? Get to work! Grab hold of any con heading for those horses, and don't let them go, no matter what. Go, my leviathans. Form a wall and hold them back. We can't possibly fight them like this. You're right. If the Khan art can't fight, there's no way for us to liberate this area. Uh, let's fall back and regroup for now. Well, dang. I guess that is the Mount of Doom. We're so ashamed. We heard you say stop, but the horses were so cool. We 
we just had to ride them, that's all. I had the same thought when we were building the defensive network, but the Khan really do love rides, don't they? Maybe that's why the Kelpie got to them so easily? Mm, they like stilts, too. Oh, indeed. They used to ride on my shell all the time. But I guess they stopped once they had so many other rides to choose from. What a shame. I kind of miss those days. I'm guessing your shell's a lot like their family home, Elder. And if it is, then it must be a special place they know they can always come back to. I'm sure of it. At any rate, all we know right now is there's something about the Kelpie that makes the Khan want to ride them. And the instant they do, they're eaten. In fact, their entire bodies are absorbed at once, so the armor didn't make a difference. Is there anything we can do to prevent that? Hmm. We could tie them up to make sure they do not move, but of course, they still need to be able to fight. There's no point bringing the Khan along if they cannot deal the final blow. Are we going to give them a mount to go into battle with? Hmm. Why don't we just ask them what they think? Maybe they can give us a hint as to what can help them to resist the Kelpie's temptation. For example, if it's a smell luring them in, then maybe we could just cover their noses. They have noses? Yeah, do Khan even have noses? It was just an example. Get on sister's level. Not that you'll ever get as close to it as I am. Maybe. Maybe we do have noses. Maybe we wouldn't want to ride a horse anymore if there was something cool to ride instead. Yeah, cooler rides. The coolest rides. We're pros after all. A cooler ride, huh? We don't care how fast it is. Looks are all that matter. Hmm, let me make sure I've got this straight. You're saying you want something you can just sit on and relax? Like one of those coin-operated kitty panda rides? And you're also saying if this thing looks cool enough, then you won't be tempted to ride the Kelpie? Exactly! Oh, then I guess let's do it. Oh, for... I knew it would come down to something like this. We cannot go with an actual... Da Xiong Mao panda. Not when this thing they need to sit on looks, needs to look cool. The fact that it has the character for cat in its Chinese name alone means it's out of the question. You need to come up with something better. I actually really like... Like, I don't know. There's people who would argue that this is a, a bad localization. I really like, I really like this because it's, it's for her specifically, right? And it's fun. And also, yeah, Mao, because it Mao Mao is what they call cats usually here, which, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Mao Mao, like, come on, right? Come on. Something cool for them to ride? That's a surprisingly tough one. Boy, if only there was a whole class of people who could tell us what would be cool to ride. The answer is clear and unchanging, like a brilliant shadow that falls across your closed eyes. Who's this? Oh, hmm. Why should that be at all difficult? If the speed of this ride is unimportant, then all you need to worry about is its form. And if a cool ride is what you require, we already have one right here. The deep crimson silhouette that captures your gaze and sets your heart ablaze with desire. The vehicle none can help but covet. That all dream of driving. But that dream must always die when the dreamer learns of the crippling expense of the fuel of its high-performance engine demands. A phantom thief may simply steal what she wants, but I'm not sure that's an option for you. Does that not make this the perfect opportunity to enjoy a car of superlative beauty? A supercar, huh? That's awesome. Boy, you and the con sound the same. Supercar? Not for me, though. But we can't have them pushing it around themselves, right? We would make a real but small-scale supercar. You can't have a supercar that isn't super fast, can you? I can't help but worry they would end up going faster than they should or even mean to. So with that in mind, what could be safer than a bull? I have to agree, and there's one bull in particular whose easygoing nature is downright divine. It's not going to be your talking one, is it? Master, you know about the holy bull Nandi, right? I don't think we could get the real one for this, but we could certainly make an imitation mechanical bull, and I don't mean those dangerous carnival rides. Mechanical bull? Let's see, what are some other cool rides? I knew it! I was going to say, there's also those flying rides that look really mysterious. Mysterious flying rides? It sounds like the con are interested in all of those. Okay, Master, let's get them the coolest looking ride we possibly can. Something so amazing they won't even be tempted to look the Kelpie's way. All right. Now, here's the thing. Only one of these might become a Type Moon reference. And so, 
I think I'm going to go with the little car because in my mind, it brings me to brings to my mind the image of like the little little Rin, right? Little Rin in the from the from the weird stuff in Stay Night's bonus scenes. You know the one, the one where she's smoking, and I don't mean like hot. I mean like she's literally smoking and in a little dumb car, and then she crashes, and it that was a whole weird sequence. Anyways, I'm gonna go with put them in supercars, put them on Vimana. I mean that'd be kind of funny, but I I, I want to see this. I want them in cars. That's, that was worth it for that noise. That was worth it for that noise. Yep. All right, let's put them in supercars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to see them in little cars. Please. Are you ready? Yes! Oh my god. Yeah! I'm just... I'm... 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 <laughs> They're not really going faster than those toy cars for kids. <laughs> They're just going on the like the little the little cars. You know, you see videos of kids running over other kids with this is amazing. Right, Senpai? It's a bizarre sight. These vehicles don't seem ideal for a jungle, but I can't deny how adorable it is seeing the Khan riding around in them. How wonderful to see them all driving around in their own mini supercars. It's a shame I can't lead them into battle myself after coming all this way as the project's supervisor. If this was an ordinary jumble, jungle, I could just run the trees over, but I can't drive through all these bodies of water. I wish I customized the cars to be amphibious, my car to be amphibious like theirs. So, um, did it work? <laughs> See for yourself. Wow, I love this crimson. I love feeling the wind on my head. Wanna go for a run? <laughs> They're driving around the Kelpie looking smugger than I thought possible. They definitely don't seem tempted by the Kelpie in the slightest anymore. <laughs> of course not. Why would they want to ride a watery death horse when they could be driving a cutting-edge crimson supercar? Why do you think it's the Phantom Thief's vehicle of choice? There's nothing more cooler or stylish. These creatures have the good taste to see as much for themselves, so of course the cars prove more appealing than a water horse. It might not be easy to fight in those things, but we should be able to deal the final blow while driving them. Yeah, we just have them run it over. So now that we know the con are safe, our job is the same as it was before. Indeed. Keep an eye on them to make sure they do not inadvertently end up on the horse's back and send them back where they came from. What? Is it just going to be the unicorn? Like the bicorn enemy type? That's what I'm assuming, right? We'll see here. All right. The battles to reclaim area three. Of course, they are riders. That makes sense. And we got any just nice, strong. Uh, uh, let's see here. I mean, we'll go with you. We got you, you, you. Um, I mean, you probably will do more damage anyway, so I might as well just keep you on. Uh, okay, that should be good. Let's go. I'm going to take a sip of my tropical pomelo iced coffee. Fruit juice and coffee is the greatest combination ever. And I cannot believe I never tried this back in Canada. Mm. It shouldn't be so good. And yet, it's the best. I've had orange juice, I've had watermelon juice, I've had all sorts of... Pomelo is a good one. It's the good stuff, man. Oh my god, you get a Sprite! Wow! For real? The Kelpie is distracted by Crimson. Wow, okay! That's kind of sick, actually. That makes me happy. Um, let's pop this on you for now, because you get... You know what? Let's go... Yeah. There you go. Yeah, look at that. Hundos all across the board. This is Charisma. This is Charisma. Or oh, yours is a uh, 
charisma for you. Okay, so let's go one, two, three. All right. Good stuff. This is going to beat it. Oh, cringe. Okay, so it just kind of just kind of does a little headbutt. Okay. Uh, let's go one, two, three. All right. Get the break for you. A little bit extra hit. Nice stuff. I thought it was going to change forms. Choppy Nay. Ooh, it actually it hits pretty hard. All things considered, it's hitting pretty hard. Like this. Right. Because then we can do uh, one, two, and then that'll buff this last one there twice. Right? I feel like that's the best way to do the most damage on the last card. Big Buster up. Yeah, I think this is my favorite costume for them. It just looks so good. Hey! That looped to 100. And they're dead. Alright. Time to finish things off the best way possible. I'm gonna nuke this friggin' horse right out of the right out of the ground. Get out of here. Did that kill it? That it did. Horse quenched. God, I hate horses. Horrible creatures. In my world, there are no horses. They're just stupid. And is it because I was had to ride a suicidal horse up a mountain? Yes. Horse kept trying to throw me off. It's gonna kill me. I hate it. A new place where we can go crazy. Is that, uh... Well, there's nothing there. Maybe we'll unlock it after we do this. Anyways, yay, we did it. With the third area free, the Gullians thought it best to rest while they could. So let's take this opportunity to review what we know about this island's key figures. This serves no greater purpose, and I have no intention of sharing with anyone. It is merely a mental exercise. Wait, is this Holmes? Besides, it's not as if there's anything better to do. Make work like this is the best way to pass the time. We know these creatures as Khan. While they do have some quirks, it remains challenging to differentiate them, and consequently, they are not given individual names. Some, though not many of them, do exhibit identifiable traits and differences. The Khan exhibit fairly high intelligence and language comprehension, but seem to have significant gaps in their knowledge. That being said, it seems safe to assume that almost all the Khan understand the current situation. From that, we can infer that they are in disseminating their knowledge among themselves in some manner. This is... I'm... Fairly certain this is Holmes, but I'm going to keep that. I'm not going to say it just in case until I'm confirmed. We do not yet know, however, whether it's intentional or not. If it is unintentional, that would suggest the Khan have a kind of collective consciousness. I wonder if this is a clue as to the true nature of the species. Let's put that theory aside for now. With regard to personality, they exhibit minute individual differences. Generally speaking, the Khan are gentle, curious, and unassuming. Their favorite activities are sunbathing and play of all sorts. Their least favorite thing is being eaten, I assume. Not that this sets them apart from any other living thing. They are not in any way aggressive, but they are still willing to fight to protect themselves. But that too could be said of many living things. Now, from a physical perspective... Alright, any Khan who is eaten by a water monster will revive another Khan kills that water monster. I'm not sure whether that Khan's own individual identity is preserved, and I cannot find any way of finding out. On an unrelated note, it seems that, at least on this island, new Khan manifests spontaneously. They seem to simply spring up from the ground. Of course, there are countless permutations of elementals, as they are the planet's sensory organs, so such manifestations aren't entirely unthinkable. My instinct tells me these creatures are neither elementals nor fairies. 
For example, they could be connected to a subterranean plant. Maybe they're even a kind of fungus. So you're saying I should give them this voice? Hi, I'm the con! I spent a fair amount of time interacting with them now, but I'm no closer to an answer. I may be able to get there if I were to build a real workshop and employ every ritual and spell I know. Wait. Hmm. But at the moment, I don't have the drive. Doing so would be akin to forcing the answer to a riddle from its teller with mystic eyes. Wait, who's this then? Finally, let's discuss their physical properties. The con are soft to the touch, but with an unusual texture and consistency, they're reminiscent of very springy meat. Cute? Maybe? While the movement generally tends towards a slow and unhurried, they demonstrate keen agility where necessary. Despite their short, stubby limbs, they are able to capably they are able to capably use all manner of tools. Their astonishing capacity for learning new things is another indication that they op may operate on a collective consciousness. If they are all able to share individually acquired skills, this may manifest as truly extraordinary dexterity. Ah, uh, this tactile sensation, this weight. Well, I understand that they do exist here. The matter of their actual composition is unclear. Elementals, fauna, life forms, concepts, sentience, species, legends, ideals, thoughts. With their ambiguous divisions and constituent elements, I am, for reasons I cannot describe, certain about one thing. If I were to... If I were to... Fuck them, the result would be both terrible and beneficial. Wait, is this Koyanskaya? D I S E C T. <gasps> Dissect. And what does that mean? There's no mistaking it, I suppose. From the con themselves, I sense a vague ominousness. An ominousness which paradoxically is free of evil. In fact, this whole world gives me a similar sense. We are being misled. There's something fundamental here we are overlooking. That, at least, is the impression I have. But at the present moment, petting the Han is more important, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. It is a little addictive. Oh. That might have been Koyanskaya. And it's, it felt like it, potentially. We'll see. But then workshop? Build a workshop? No, that wouldn't be. Oh my god, we're, we're back at the time limit again. Oh! Okay. Fine. Be that way. I guess we'll continue this in a bit. Oh, you grab me by the gullet and make me want to keep playing, and yet I cannot. Oh, it's the worst feeling. Anyways, guys, we will see you next time for some more, where we will uh be continuing on. I'll see you then. Ciao. All right, here we are. Another day. More stuff. I grinded at lunch. And now it's time for actual continuing on. But first off, I'm just going to check. How are we doing with like buying stuff here? Can't afford those. We can get this. Okay. A fairy tale of rain and stars. You just disappeared. Oh. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny, actually. Um, look at all these things that I haven't been grabbing. I should probably, like, grab them. Um, I always forget about this stuff. Alright, grab some of those. Anyways, Fairy Tale of Rain and Stars. What does this do? It is yours. NP gained by 5%, C star gained by 50. Ooh. That's pretty good. Demonic Spear of Rain and Starry Skies wielded by Morgan, the Queen of Winter, after she returned from the ends of the world. Once a staff used to command many kinds of magecraft, the unending fires of war have tempered it into a pure weapon. So, like, the implication is that this is the same thing Castoria has. Right? First form? Possibly? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, let's go on with the story. All right. City on the water. Yo, are we making, are we making Venice 2? 
Venetia Harder. That'd be cool. I hope I hope it like literally we're gonna make like a whole city. God, there's so many of them. The village sure is lively now, huh? Oh, there's so many here that even my poor forgotten back has become a prime hangout spot. Eh, it does feel like they're taking all the sunlight for themselves, though. So many can't have returned now that we've recovered over half the island. It's almost like both a blessing and a curse. Come to think of it, it feels like I'm forgetting something. Or is it going to be like Gurn the Gone where it's like, too many people, gotta blow up the planet. When's lunch again? I'm currently munching grass under my flippers. Are we sure this turtle isn't just gonna drop dead on us? Of course, I would like to take good care of him since turtles are lucky creatures, but still. <laughs> it really is nice to have a young girl caring for you, especially at my age. That's right. There was another girl who smiled kindly at me before. Or smiled at me before she gave me a message to pass on. Oh, I remember it now. Those sisters were looking for you. It seems they have a favor to ask. Why didn't you say so sooner? Oh, I swear. Old people, am I right? As I'm sure you've all seen for yourselves, we now have more con than we do homes. So we were thinking it's time to expand the base again. But given the topography here, we thought it'd be better to make it a full-blown floating residential area. So you'd like us to build more buildings again? Absolutely! Easy for you to say. I'm the one who has to gather the materials and oversee the construction, you see. I know. I have absolute confidence in your abilities. Just tell us what you need for, woman, and we'll get it done. She loves it. Very well. Now that I'm on this boat, so to speak, I suppose there's no abandoning the ship now. So what sort of floating residences do you have in mind? All we can really come up with are, on, on our own are more of the simple structures the village already has. So this time, we'd like to hear all your ideas. Did someone mention boats? What if you made a giant boat everyone could live on? I think that would be lovely. What do you call those again? Cruise ships? Hold it, or um, hold it, hold it. If you're going to make a big houseboat, then it's got to be a Japanese-style houseboat. We can have a big party with Takachio's favorite sea bream tempura in the tatami room and have a rockin' atsumori time with drinking and karaoke. While we're at it, I also like to catch a cormorant fishing show. Talk about a dream come true. Ha ha ha! Are you sure that's a good idea, Nobu? If you hanoji your houseboat, you know there won't be anywhere to run, right? Not that you managed that last time. That's why we make it an armor-plated houseboat, see? This is why I was so ahead of my time, especially as a daimyo. Besides, if the boat catches fire, there'd be plenty of places I could escape to. Just gotta dive into the water! I don't have any ideas for floating residents, but you know how they have astronauts train underwater for space missions? Well, water's part of the universe, and the universe is mostly outer space. So what about a space house? You know, like a, a colony ship? Just build it with powerful enough thrusters, and you'll be set even if the planet explodes. Man, we just can't keep other servants from popping in with their ideas, huh? Still, our ultimate goal here is to create more housing. And since we'll probably just be copying the outward appearance of whatever we go with like usual, with the differences being purely aesthetic, I think you just go ahead and pick whichever one you like. <sighs> do I stick with the theme of space? Or do I go with the Japanese-style houseboat being kind of fun-sounding? Let's see. Well, it'll be determined mostly by, I was going to say what we have, but we have enough for all of them. All right, let's live on a colony ship. Let's do it. We're making it all sci-fi anyways. Yep. That's just it, huh? Okay. Just a gosh dang shmup boss. Let's hope the sea monsters don't shoot the core. This is your basic bedroom. It's very clean and simple and has excellent G-Force dampening. <laughs> Look at him go! Oh my god, that's amazing! There he goes! Whee! 
Oh, that's fun. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. Yeah. Oh my God. He's like a little DVD player. So this whole ship is made out of steel, huh? I can't even imagine to begin how this technology works. And this is the hallway. It's wide enough that you could have two Professor Babbage's Babbage's walk shoulder to shoulder while literally blowing off steam. Well, I guess they'd probably bang into each other since steam would mean they can't actually see. Who are you talking about? <laughs> and that's not all. I also had them build this cockpit to complete the whole space colony ship package. The console is purely aesthetic right now, so it doesn't actually work as a spaceship, but I also made sure it could be expanded. Let's just say I'm looking forward to the next season. Huh? The window? Oh, it's just a space wallpaper. What is it? Is there something behind me? Oh, for... Did you try and trick me, you little rascal? There's obviously nothing here. Hmm? An anti-gravity device? I'm afraid the ship doesn't have one of those yet, either. They're really expensive. <laughs> How are the con floating around like that? We just felt like floating. I think we might fit really well in outer space. Hmm. I don't know what the deal with these things are. Maybe they're from the far reaches of the Servantverse somewhere? I could see them being aliens from some undiscovered planet. Maybe they're the descendants of a race that escaped an ancient star system before it exploded or something. Anyway, don't worry. I don't have any problem with, the hang with them hanging around as long as they're not sabers. Wow. Way to go, X. You really are a genius at bringing in properties from who knows where. You may have been way on the nose with your theme, but... You still did a good job with this colony ship thing. I agree. We don't have to worry about rain at all in here, and the cons seem to like it a lot too. Thank you so much, everyone. They really do look like they're spacewalking. I mean, to be fair, if I could just float, yeah, I'd be bouncing around like that. What do you take me for? Someone who wouldn't do that? That just seems fun. Are you kidding me? That's it? No. What? That was nothing. Did I at least unlock? Okay, at least, okay. At least we unlocked a second thing for me to grind, but that's crazy. Oh, this is, this is the longest event ever. And I can't even like do the reset quests and try out the other stuff till probably afterwards. Dang, for realsies? Okay. This was a nine minute video. Okay. All right. See you guys tomorrow. All right. Day three. I hope that there's substantial content this time because, uh, boy, boy, some of this was very much just like short. Uh, let's see here. Seaside singing, invitation to eternity. We're dealing with mermaids, sirens, perhaps. Oh, also, I did the Wu Zetian rank up off screen. Uh, didn't even realize that she got one till they put out a tweet about it. So good thing, good thing that we checked, right? Anyway, seaside singing, invitation to eternity. That sounds like invitation to eternity makes me think of like Sonic CD. If you know, you know. Once we solved the con housing problem, we decided to move on to the fourth area. Zip zoom! The con, finally outfitted with quality weapons, durable armor, and vehicles that kept them in high spirits, seemed confident in their ability to tackle whatever came next. Even with the reports of yet another unfamiliar water monster in the next area, we couldn't let our fears get the better of us. And so, they set out to execute the plan, keeping vigilant and trusting their experience up to this point. However, Oh my god, are we going to need to grab a singing servant to counteract the singing? Is that what we're going to do? I do hate turning tail and running away. Still, at least we did not suffer too many casualties, which makes this more of a strategic retreat. It's not about the casualty count, Empress. The fact that there were casualties at all is something we need to reflect on. Was it that bad? We couldn't do anything except run for it. Unfortunately, this next enemy's bad news too. I had the same thought when we faced the Kelpie, but it looks like psychological attacks are the Khan's weakness. 
True. It does seem like they're too trusting for their own good sometimes. Yes, I think so too. The Khan were instantly trapped in the enemy's tempo and helpless to break free. This is the mermen. Mer mermaids? Some time ago. Dang! Those must be the new water monsters. They really do look like human women. They've spotted us. Watch out for... Huh? Are they... singing? That's not all. Look. They're dancing. Making their water bodies ripple and sway. That isn't just random movements that look like dance. They're doing it on purpose, I can tell. They're keeping to a rhythm and are conscious of every movement they make all the way down to the tips of their fingers. They're using their body's undefined form to move about freely, calculating every move, even any droplets they may splash. What? Oh, that's beautiful. Pretty voice. <laughs> they just driving into the water. <laughs> Why is that such a funny image? Just them driving straight into the water. Uh, not again, get back here. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm loving the show. I'm gonna go up, watch up close. Now Vritra's been sucked into the water too. And after she came here to help without being asked, she calls that helping? They got some of the con too. It's just like what happened with the Kelpie. Looks like we've got no choice but to retreat. So I guess Vritra's just gone. Rip. Never mind, back like nothing happened. Uh, can't believe they managed to lure even in even me in with their singing and dancing. Those creatures are as cunning as Indra. I think it's more you're just really, really vulnerable to that kind of temptation. Looks like it's up to me to fill you in again. Those monsters you saw today were probably Rusalki. Their legend says they use singing and dancing to lure people in and pull them underwater. Some people think a... Uh, Rusalka is a Vodya Vod uh, Russian difficult. Some people think a Rusalka is a Vodyanoi's wife, but nobody knows for sure. I honestly don't care. Rusalka? They're from the same Eastern European region as the Vodyanoi. I wonder if that means any Nah, probably not. I'll just do. Oh um, you're alright, that's a relief. It was close. I was almost lunch. But I've already seen Lam Lam. You're better than any monster. Is that so? <laughs> I'm flattered. Wait. Hold on. Does this mean if the art, if the con know about other kinds of art and entertainment, they wouldn't be drawn to the Rusalkis singing and dancing anymore? Oh, sounds like it. We just got a great hint. Oh my god, can we invent video games for them? We're gonna have to bolster the con's resistance to the Rusalkis singing and dancing, just like we did with the Kelpie's Cool Factor. And to do that, I think we'll have to give them culture. Like my water top ballet. That's a good idea and all, but there are too many con here for even me to give them a solid cultural education alone. And even if I could, I don't want to cheapen my art with too many repeat performances. My rule is one show a day. Well then, I think we'll have to build some kind of cultural arts center. That sounds fine to me, but exactly what sort of facility should we build? I swear to God if Tomoe appears. <laughs> I knew you'd be here. So, you wish to create a building to teach ignorant masses the glory of true entertainment? In a sense, that is exactly what I dedicated my entire reign to achieving. I speak, of course... Yes! Yes! An arcade, yes? I'm certain that must be it. For what better represents modern entertainment than a center for games of the video? Don't forget about if you are in MMORPGs. You can forget everything in those worlds. Reality. Your weight. Deadlines. No, no, no. I'm speaking of the theater, of course. Now, do not interrupt me again. Only in the theater can patrons enjoy singing, poetry, stage plays, concerts, and so much more. That is why a golden theater made by and for me is the only possible choice. Oh, gosh, oh, gosh. Um, it may be presumptuous of me to suggest this, but I don't think any discussion of entertainment or culture would be complete without books and reading. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, it might be really nice to have a library. Games, books, song, and dance, huh? I can tell all those sound like fun. I think the con would probably enjoy any of those. 
They've always loved playing. So just choose whichever one you prefer. I think I have to go- I mean, we have to go with video games. Like, I'm sorry, who do you take me for? I'm literally a gamer. And that said, we'll do all the other scenes eventually once we get the reset quests, because that'll be fun to do when we're when we're done, right? And you do get items for doing so, so why not? Let's build an arcade! We must teach them real culture. Better be like the Sega building. Yes, it is! It's literally like the old, like the Sega arcade buildings. That's so good. Oh man, rip those Sega arcade buildings. This is like the last peek into the culture of arcades that we'll get because let, let me tell you, once the Bleach World Phenomenon saved, they ain't coming back. Yes! Can perfect! They got a ton of different genres here too. Action, shooters, puzzle, fighting. They even have large motion simulator cabinets. And even better, they are all completely free to play. If this is not the pinnacle of culture and entertainment, I do not know what is. Take a look, the con are already being drawn to the oversized cabinets. Uh oh. Oh no, they made them too big. Oh no. I fail to consider their size. Damn. The little arms can only reach the stick or the buttons, not both. They really screwed up. Uh, hang on. Check that out. <gasps> Co op play? Yo. Two players, one controller. <laughs> They've got one con on stick and one on buttons, and they're totally having fun. Single player split controller co op? Never would have thought of that. I'm impressed I can play that way. Well, that is a relief for the time being. We should still look into adjusting the controllers for one player. Oh, hello, Hybatrung. Uh, thank you for coming. Wow, it's so lively in here. That's a nice way of saying noisy, but as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, it can be a little loud at first. Or you can turn the volume down if you want. So shall I start by explaining the Kihondamentals? So you use this stick and these buttons to control the characters on the screen, huh? Hmm. It does seem like fun, but I think it might take some time for us to get used to this. I've never been very familiar with games. How about you, Ni? You've always been the more playful of us. I don't know. I've always been better at more physical games. Don't worry, we got games like that too. Air hockey, laser tag, beanbag toss. I'll just see. Come on, boss, boss, play with us. Well, I suppose we should be able to handle those. Okay, you're on. So air hockey's a team game, and there's no way we can lose. Oh, they're playing air hockey. Yo, the special shot. Cute. Boy, they're just flexing their skills and moving them around now. I think we can at least keep up with these physical games. Huh? What's this one with the balls and hoop? That's a free throw game. It goes to see how many times you can throw a ball through the hoop within a time limit. Yo, high by trung ballin'? I want to see how good you are, boss boss. Me too. Go on, knees, see if you can break the record. Okay, if that's what you want, sister. All right, let's do this thing. You look a little too into it, but I guess that's dies okay. There's more than one way to have fun. And go! Like this. And here we go. Wow, you're doing super amazing. Especially for your first time. My first time, uh, didn't nearly go as well. I guess it all comes down to whether you're a jock or not. <laughs> She's really cutting it close on time, though. Whether she tops the high score or not comes down to sinking this last basket. Oh no, the ball got stuck on the way back. This is going to slow her down. Oh! Completely in the zone. Yeah. Oh, no, the con! Woo! Dunk! Ah. Uh, ah. Should throw a con that came over to chair on by mistake and I counted? I'm sorry. Yeah, that was fun. 
a new high score! Oh, a new game. I want to play too! I've got a feeling this is going to be a whole thing. I, I don't think that's what they mean when they say to be one with the ball. <laughs> okay, bye. That was good. That was worth it. Oh, that was really good. I was smiling. I, I want us to then get to the, the mermaids and then be like, that's it. This is lame. All right. The battle to reclaim area four. This is ludicrous, and I'm, I'm all in for it. Let's see. What do we got? Just thinking, oh, they're probably just gonna use the ghost sprites because they look for it so similar. Like the ghost girls from the Garden of Sinners event. All right, let's see what happens this time. Hustle's detected, and they've spotted you too. They're already trying to charm you. What about the con? I can't get that mean jam out of my head. I already know how to pound these noobs. Oh my god, yes. Yes! Baggers! These, those dancers remind me of Fortnite! <laughs> I'm just... Okay. Uh-oh. The artist say reality is a game. I know, I always think about how I'd free run up a building when I see one IRL. I'd love to see you try. I find I'm always on the lookout for loathsome campers of spawn when I see a steel tower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're doing a different thing with Tomoe in this event, where they're kind of making her speak like Starfire from Teen Titans. Instead of spawn campers, she says like campers of spawn. You know what? That's solid. Keep that up. I enjoy that gimmick. Nodding in knowing assent. I don't think them not being able to distinguish games from reality is a good thing. But being able to imagine fun alternate scenarios is a good thing overall. It looks like them getting some culture did help them resist these things. Now that they can't manipulate the con anymore, our plan is the same as with the Kelpie. Attack and don't get dragged underwater. Then let's do that. Do it. Once we take care of these monsters, there will only be one area left to reclaim. Oh, so that means probably one more day and then we get to go into the real story? Let's see here. Um, I just want to use you because I don't use, I don't have you very often. So let's just, uh, give you a go and, uh, let's replace, I mean, honestly, I'm not super worried about just what enemies I have. Let's just go with this. All right. I uh, suppose so let's replace you with, uh, oh, assassin gets big up. So let's go with, let's see here. Where are you? I wish it did the actual, like, you can see who gets the attack bonus. Yeah, all right. Uh, I'm sure we'll go with this for now. Get them bonuses, and then if you die, you can get brought in. All right, let's go. Show them the real superpower of gamers. Just for some reason, imagining a game like this referencing Fortnite... I hate Fortnite. I think it's stupid and cringe, but it does bring a smile to my face. Anyways, yeah, I was right. There's a bunch of them. All right. Let's grab some of these. All right. Ooh, they're a little... Well, I was going to say they're a little beefy, but then Morgan just did ridiculous damage. Sleepwalking. All right. Continuing here. So yeah, now you got this, which does... I This was... Re it said random effects before, but now it's not just random effects. Now it... it the, the upgrade tells you what it does. Which is great. That's a, that's a really good change. In fact, I kind of wish all of those uh, random effect ones got upgraded to actually we just tell you what it does now. 
because the fact that there's a large number of things in the game that we're just like, yeah, we don't actually, we're not going to tell you what it does, I think is pretty lame. Anyways, boy, you're actually getting hurt quite a bit. So let's clear out these enemies here. How much do you have? 40 something? Okay, let's, uh, you got yours too. I'm going to pop this just for now. Let's go one, two, three. Should kill them all. Yep. Alright. Uh, four left. Uh, how much does... Let's see here. Yours is on all enemies, but we don't have that. Is yours on all enemies or single enemy? I might do that on you just because that's a pretty strong one. Right, and we'll go one, two, three. Do as much as we can. Ooh, that's big damage. I mean, that's, I guess, the power of NP2 single target with, you know, event bonus and everything. Yeah. All right. It, I do find it real funny. It's like, how do they attack? They just womp, womp, womp between them. Uh, let's go. You know, actually, let's just go one, two, three. Get some big stuff for both of you. Okay. 67. 88. Okay. Hundo? Oh, so close. Come on, hit her one more time. Hit her again. No! We can pop this. Alright. Uh, skill seal's on, which is fine, because it doesn't matter anymore. Because, I mean, we're doing the power of gaming, so Ganesh Impact it is! You're so silly. All right. Big damage and oh, if that critted, we would have won. Okay. So. Uh, one, two, three. Nice. Mermaids? No, thank you. I prefer... Ladies with feet. <sighs> Always comes back to it. I was actually not even trying to get there. <sighs> Fine. I'm glad to see Master's party is victorious. Not that I expected a different outcome. Right? Senpai has so much experience as a master, I was sure he wouldn't have any trouble with them. Same. Alright, while well, the field team is taking a well-earned break, I'd like to address some things that have been on my mind. Shame Holmes is on leave. That This would be a lot easier with him around. There's been some weird stuff with Holmes lately. There's been some stuff with him that I'm like, huh, you know, hmm, we'll see. I know, but there's nothing we can do about that now. Besides, it's not like it's anything new. Anyways, what's on your mind? Yeah, right, I, I thought it's some weird stuff going on with Holmes. I'm not going to say that I think there's something going on with him because people will be like, well, correct, you found the traitor. And like, screw that. Don't don't say that. Um, but I also want people to be like, no, it's fine. Don't worry. It doesn't go anywhere. It's like, cool. Thank you for spoiling me in your own way. Um, just shut up. OK, anyways, what's on your mind? There's only one place left to retake on this giant turtle island. 
So I want to make sure we are all up to speed before heading into that battle. Specifically, I want to talk about our enemies, the water monsters Hybatrung and the Khan have been facing. The first type we encountered was Merfolk. These things have so many traits that they feel like an indistinct mass. They seem to be related to mermaids and are known worldwide, so there's not much to tie them to any particular region. Indeed. Next, we encountered the Hermit Crab Monks. I saw these creatures for myself. Such monsters are native to Japan, but these appear to be a Hermit Crab variant. And there were the bunyips from Australia. They were terrifying monsters with loud, intimidating cries. After that, there were the Vodyanoi, which come from across the sea along with the mysterious mist. These monsters are known throughout Russia. It's said they like to live near sluices, but I never thought they would be able to build their own sluices. Next was the Kelpie, water horses from Scotland. And most recently, the Rusalki, which some people believe are also the Vodyanoi's wives. The various origins of the monsters seem to be completely disparate, but I don't think we can say they're nothing alike either. Even the belief that Vodyanoi's and Rusalki are married is just a theory, but I don't think they even came from the same part of Russia. More importantly, I'm wondering what else these monsters might have in common. Being from the water, perhaps? Hmm? No, that's difficult, too. It's not like they all have certain things in common. I get the sense one of the monsters is the odd one out. I'm gonna say the Bunyip? Because it's like a... Like, you, like it's more of a land thing, right? That or the first one. It's just a hunch, but I think it's significant. Yeah, the Mer people were just kind of like... Generic? Not from somewhere? You know? The vast majority of these monsters have one thing in common except for one, and I think that one thing will be the hint. So what is it, Da Vinci? What is the thing most of them have in common? Well, as it turns out, these water monsters are... Don't fade away! If that's true, then what could it mean? Unfortunately, I haven't been able to draw any conclusions yet, but I do think this is the clue we need to start making progress on this mystery. In fact, I think it's the key to the question that's been bugging us this whole time. Why have the Singularity's coordinates remained indecipherable? I'm trying to think. It's not that they're an island, because, like, Russia's a large landmass. Um, they're all ocean-facing, maybe? But I think most countries are. I don't know. I don't... No. Yay! Flipper cape! Rescue from spiritual phenomena. And the next one is going to be locked. Yep, 4-4. Four, four. That is, and 14 days. That means that, yeah, this, this must be uh, basically approaching the end. So if that brings us to the actual end of the mission the next time, cool beans. Otherwise, uh, I will see you guys next time for some more because now that we have enough videos here um boy everyone on my friend list rolled and got a morgan everyone i'm looking at my my uh, discord here yeah every single one got a morgan so that's fun so we'll see you guys next time for some more ciao Yo. Yeah.